Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. We're back after a summer break, and I'm very excited about the guest that we have today. We have Julie George, who's the author of The Million Dollar Host and now a consultant in the short-term rental industry. Julie George listed her first property on Airbnb in 2016, and in less than three years later, she's managing 130 properties on Airbnb for property owners and has amassed in excess of $8 million in bookings. Uh, in late 2019, Julie sold her property management business to a larger company, Home Time, and now she's considered one of the world's leading experts in short-term rentals. She mentors other budding entrepreneurs on how to build a successful business in the sharing economy through the Legends Accelerator program. I'm so excited to have her on today because we've been talking on and off online and finally we're meeting in person. Hi, Julie. How are you? Maeva, we finally connect. How exciting. And uh, yeah, look, what, a, what an honor to be on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited to have you as a guest. Um, well, A, because you're so good at talking and uh, being interesting. <laughs> and those are always the kind of people that I'm looking to have on this. And yeah, so you've been digital nomading around Australia for the last few months. Tell me about what you've been up to. Oh, look, and, and actually, as you say that, there was a cat flying in the background. Now I understand the name of your business. What a gorgeous yeah. cat you've got. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he does like to make appearances on the podcast for those who are he, watching the video. He doesn't, he doesn't want to miss out on the uh, the stardom, but, um, but maybe, yes, you're right. I have, uh, look, I've joined the trend. I've become a digital nomad. I saw that so many other people were not well, not a slave to their cubicle anymore. And isn't that one of the blessings out of COVID that we've all decided that, you know what, we can actually, as long as there's Wi-Fi and a comfy bed, I can work from yeah. anywhere. So why not work in somewhere beautiful, like in my the picture that I've got up at the moment, which is where I, I am at the moment on the east coast of Australia and, um, and yeah, loving life and living in a beautiful part of the world. That's amazing. I'm also a big fan of digital nomading. I do like to do it every couple of months out of a year, uh, maybe even a little bit more than that. So when you were managing properties, is this something that you had imagined for your future life? To be honest, no. It, it's been an evolving um, dream. And the dream, you know, I just, it's quite amazing, actually. When I first started this business back in 2016, it seems like years ago, but it's only five years ago, that I first had my well, my one property uh, listed on Airbnb. And, you know, and that really came about that I had, you know, a long-term tenant just move out of furnished property. And I thought, well, what is all this fuss about with Airbnb? I better give this a, a go. And uh, so, and then listed it. Initially, it was just that the light bulb went off that there's some money-making opportunities here. There is opportunities to help other people uh, realize the same success that I've had with this amazing opportunity with property investors being able to get better returns uh, for the, their properties, be able to use the properties themselves as the other bonus. And so initially I built a business in property managing management, looking other, after the day-to-day -day running of other people's homes um, just as a way to replace my income. So that was the first goal. The second goal was there's more than just a job here. I'm going to build an empire. And of course, that took a lot. That wasn't as easy as I make it out to be. Hello, Pussycat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it was uh, a lot of systems. Uh, well, firstly, the vision, the systems, the getting a team because I think, you know, you and I were just talking about your success. And really, it's great to have all this work coming at you. But unless you've got the framework, the team, the operations, the systems, how the hell do you deliver? So, uh, so that was my biggest, I guess, roadblock initially and getting over that. Then <laughs> once I'd created the empire and I was working on the business, not in it, in the last 12 months of running 130 properties, I was working only maybe 10 hours a week in the, uh, in the business. And my office staff would say, if I turned up to the office, they'd be like, what are you doing here? Don't touch anything best welcome ever, right? So then that occurred to me that I need to do something extra. And so then I leveraged the success of that to write my book, Million Dollar Host. That went bestseller. 
Uh, then I was like, okay, keep dreaming bigger because my, my motto is always dream big and then dream bigger. So I'm like, okay, I've got, I've replaced my income. I've built the empire. I'm working on it, not in it. I've written a best-selling book. What's next? And so then there was an opportunity, well, a, a tap on my shoulder to sell the business. And at that stage, I was starting to get opportunities to speak all around the world. And I was flying to San Francisco to hang well I was going to say hang out with Chesky but um <laughs> I did pass him in the hallway so that's kind of hanging out that's with kind of Brian like Chesky. yeah uh but uh, and he does have one of my books well he did have one of my books on his desk but he probably just used it as a paperweight or something but um but when I was getting those opportunities it occurred to me that okay there's an opportunity here to go even bigger let's go global and start helping other people to replicate the same success that I've had. So mentoring, supporting, inspiring. And so that is where I find myself now, sold the business. Now I'm coaching. Now I'm getting my thrill out of seeing other people uh, do the same, build those businesses up. So I know that was a long answer, but really, no, the answer to your question was no, I never in a million years dreamed I would be well, I'm now 46. I'm revealing my age. Uh, I'm 46. I never have to work another day in my life because I've done very well in this business. I now get to enjoy seeing other people succeed in the business and I bloody love it. So, um, so yeah, but living the dream. Yeah. That's so inspiring. Um, how did you, because I guess that this whole process of, building the business like you mentioned is actually mostly about systems and processes finding the right people now you're helping people do that but what did you do to, to figure out how to get out of the weeds because that's I such did a big challenge I did it the hard way and I, I suspect you're probably going through a bit of those growing pains at the moment too right um look I think you know initially when I started to run this business of course like a lot of entrepreneurs, I was like, I had trust issues and I didn't want to delegate. I didn't think that anybody else could do it as well as I could do it. I had to get over myself was the first thing. I had to then realize that I needed to surround myself with people that enhanced me and were smarter than me. And I needed to, I guess, really have a long, hard look at myself, my strengths, my weaknesses. Um, I can tell you my weakness is cleaning. <laughs> Um, I am terrible. Do not employ me as a cleaner because I take the shortcuts. I'll mop up, you know, patch mop. Um, anyway, that I'm a terrible cleaner. Don't employ me as a cleaner. Uh, but um, I realized that that was one of my weaknesses. So initially, the first person that I hired onto my team had to be strong in that skill um, and, and have strength in that area. They did. So then the next thing was, okay, I needed somebody who could deal with um, guests because after a while the guests complaints or the keep locking themselves out kind of got to me <laughs> the novelty wore off in the short-term rental industry um, and I think and I still am scarred by the day that I'd made 17 beds in a row so like there's oh, all these okay. these memories right that I go holy moly I, you know and when you get to that point where you go I whose idea was this short-term rental business I'm either going to have to pack it away and give it up and go and get a real job, um, which my family always thought that I probably should. Like, what the <laughs> hell are you still doing, Julie? They still don't understand the concept uh, of short-term rentals. Um, or get those systems, get that framework, get that team in place and trust. So maybe I made every mistake you possibly can. I took the long way around. And now I'm just hoping that if I can help give people shortcuts to success, you know, and save somebody a headache um, or, you know, drinking 10 bottles of wine at night because they're stressed out or give them their time back. Actually, that's probably the biggest thing because this is a 24 seven business, right? So if we can find balance and have a life um, as well as running these incredible businesses, that to me is an incredible feat in itself. Yeah. I wonder, I mean, you mentioned trust and then delegating but there are certain levels of trust that you can give like you can say okay I've created this checklist follow this checklist and it's easy to trust somebody who's reliable and good at following checklists to do those kind of things 
But there are other positions in a business where you're like, okay, well, now we're taking this vision elsewhere. We are redoing these systems. We are doing something that requires more than just doing, but actually thinking, what's the secret for finding somebody that can help you there? Because yeah, you have to get over yourself, but at the same time, if you have somebody, I mean, the ways I see it sometimes in the way that maybe a lot of business owners do is if you have somebody that is too autonomous, they're going to go and take the business in some other direction. That wasn't your vision, right? But even right. though you want to outsource it all to them. So like, what is the, or delegate it all? Mm. How do you find that the creating the mix between the right systems, but empowering the smart people to do what they need to do? Great question. And, you know, it really is about empowering uh, and and really um, respecting the team that you've got. There has to be a real mutual respect. Uh, look, I found um, money talks, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, look, you know, and one of the things that I will, I'm very proud of is the way that I formulated my team. I looked at the short-term rental and I did it very differently to a lot of other businesses out there. I didn't have the layers of cleaners, VAs, management, my team was made up uh, like a, it was like a franchise, to be honest. I had an umbrella company and my role ultimately was connecting the homeowner uh, to the guest. And what I was doing was that I then employed co-hosts uh, as a franchise to do the day-to-day -day running of the, the, the properties. So my, and just to take you back, when I recognized that I was a terrible cleaner, I just happened to be having a coffee with a friend of mine, 72 year old Glenn, who had come to the end of his advertising career. Glenn and I used to, in a former life, we used to sell yellow pages advertising for 10 years. I did that. So uh, good old marketing, but um, he had finished his advertising career, came to me and said, I don't want to give up work. What can I do to help? And I said, do you have a mop? Do you have a bucket? Do you have a smartphone? Let's go. And what I was doing was as soon as I, well, I gave him some properties, but as soon as I um, onboarded a new property, I worked out all the details with the homeowners. I set the boundaries, got the guidelines in place, and that's hard in itself. Um, then I was handing the property off to Glenn, who would do the guest communications, meeting and greeting in person, he would do all the cleaning. He would do the laundry. And then he would also, uh, he would know the home intimately. So he could go into that house and tell if there were any damages that we needed to report to Airbnb, but also any repairs that need to be made. So he took real pride in that home. He took ownership of the reviews. And um, when there was a good review, he was on top of the world. When there was a negative review, he, you know, there was a slump, but also that was how I could gauge whether he was doing a good job or not uh, so he was getting he was had the the little portfolio of properties now what I was doing was I was also splitting the um, the commission that I was charging I was doing a profit share so of the 25 percent that I charged the homeowners I gave six percent of that to my co-host to Glenn plus the full cleaning fee that we held from the guest so Glenn was running a little business of his own. It was in his best interest to respond to those inquiries super fast, to extend a person's stay, to upsell them uh, maybe for tours or, or any of the upsells that we were doing. He was getting a cut out of that. So he could actually benefit as my business grew, so did his. And he had unlimited earnings. Now, I would always recommend that anybody in business if you are trying to build a team and you're trying to empower them and you know really listening to them respecting them but also don't be don't be greedy yeah share the love share the profits and if somebody came to me out of my team and said julie i've got an idea could we introduce i don't know could we put mini bars in and uh, an honesty box mini bar my answer was always yes let's give that a go because firstly I'm respect I'm listening to you I'm respecting your idea I'm going to take a punt on your concept I'm going to back you 
And we're going to go 50-50. If this idea works, I'm going to split the profit straight down the line with you 50-50. So it really worked. And what it did was I, I, I had a lot of loyalty from my team. I had a lot of um, people just had fun too. We always had fun. We had team get togethers. We had regular meetings. I communicated my vision of the company with these people all the time so that they knew exactly where we were going there was no secrets there was no whispers by the water cooler or anything like that um but it really yeah it really worked sorry my but see i told you i talk a lot and i'll go on and on so. well that, that's why i have you on here as a guest as well so i don't have to do as much talking <laughs> i just invite smart people to come on and interesting no, people see and let them go um see, i'm curious you know, about it yeah. I'm curious about uh, this profit share situation because it's something I've also been um, thinking as a way to empower my team. How can I share this profit? Um, I also have goals, you know, about I want to save up this much money at six months of salary, for example, in case something goes down, I can still pay the team. Uh, I want to save up to get vacations for everybody. So with these kind of goals in mind, and I also don't know what percentage does who get of profit? How do you decide those kind of things? It's hard. And it's it, you do have to do a bit of trial and error. Um, you know, initially, I played with those numbers for a long time before I came to that magic number of 25% charging to the owners, 6% paying out. I, those numbers were not, the, you know, they, they evolved over time. And it's really tricky when you have to bring the numbers, well, up for the owner commission like you have to start charging more or you have to bring it down when you're paying out to your team so you really you need to be really um, mindful that maybe <laughs> yeah just really think it out crunch numbers before you put it into place because you don't want to short you don't want to um yeah do wrong by yourself like don't be overly generous so that you can't afford to feed the cat you know at the end of the day like we need to make sure that you're looked after as well because the number one thing here is the business wouldn't be there without the ceo so um but it is oh gosh it's a lot of trial and error the one thing i think you know i missed out on when i was building my business and i looked for this was to find somebody a coach a mentor or some sort of expertise in the industry. There just wasn't. Back in 2016, when the horse and cart were around, no, uh, look at, you know, it was only five years ago, but there really were not any, there were, were not the YouTube videos, there were not the clubhouse rooms, there were not the podcasts, there were not the books. Um, and it was hard. So I think what I would say to anybody listening to us right now, if you are building a business, you're looking to scale, and it doesn't matter if it's not short-term rental, but really educate, take notice and take in all the free knowledge that you can find out there on the in your industry and but filter it because it's yeah. some of it can be bullshit. And I hope that's okay to swear on your podcast because yes, I just did. <laughs> um, excellent. Uh, but some of it is, but you will soon tell who are the, the true um well, I think what you've got to do is look at the background of these gurus out there and make sure that they have actually walked the walked the walk. So you know, and um, and been and got the numbers on the board themselves before you take their advice. But but yeah, look for a mentor, a coach, or a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I I have learned from podcasts uh, before as well. Even when I was trying to figure out some tax situations, and I was like, what if I just instead of searching it on google what if i search for it on a spotify <laughs> and did it work yeah because actually on google for example i mean we do google so i don't want to talk too much uh crap about it but you'll find that I actually try to answer a question and it's some content marketer who wrote it who has never done the thing before it's all very high level it's all very vague you read it and you can't do anything with it but people recording podcasts they're not going to hire whoever to just say those things it's going to be somebody who feels comfortable talking about that I think at least that's what my experience has been when listening to podcasts so I did find some pretty useful information on there I'm you curious really, okay. yeah. I think you really want to find somebody that gives you some actionable steps that you yeah. can take right here right now and um, if you can find somebody like that subscribe get onto them and make sure that you stick with their um their content because it, it will it, yeah it will 
perhaps make an, a big influence on your business? Yeah, definitely filter down, try to stick to just a handful of mentors, even not all of them. So speaking of um, publishing things and content online, you know, you're huge on Clubhouse, you're all over the place online. Uh, is that something that you started to do in your when you were managing properties or how has all of that helped your business and brought you to where you are today? Yeah, it really evolved over time. I guess once it was actually when the book came out, probably. So I, I had a lot of people when I, um, I, in the first 12 months of this business, even with all the trial, the errors, me cleaning those properties, like we still managed to do a million dollars in bookings in that first year. Now that blew my mind. Like what the hell? I, I started with one property and suddenly there's a million dollars in the bank account through Airbnb, like, and we were 100% Airbnb as well. That's the other thing that we well, we didn't need to go anywhere else. We were getting occupancy. We were getting bookings. It was great. And uh, Airbnb sent me a key ring. Thank you very much for my million dollar um, earnings. But um, uh, but I it was it was when people had saw that success or you know and as you know I I do like to like I'll. I'll shout it from the stars. If, if something exciting happens to me, I'm the first to self-promote and go, holy crap, I just made a million dollars on Airbnb. Um, but what a lot of people started to do was saying, well, how did you do it? And of course, that's when I realized I can write all this, this story down once and put it into a book and publish it over and over and over. But it was then that that book was the, oh, sorry. My father trying to call me. Turn your phone off during podcast. Sorry, Maver. Um, <laughs> might be invited back if they. Um, but uh, it was that book became my best business card ever, uh, and got me into so many doors and and really set. Well, I was able to leverage that to get onto podcasts, to get onto uh, in in front of television cameras, um, media, but. The other thing that I did, and this is a little bit of a tip for short-term rental operators out there, is that I actually, just when I was managing properties, I approached the media and put positive news stories out about short-term rentals into my community as a way of, well, firstly, building my brand and really making sure that new work was coming to me so I didn't have to go door knocking for properties. Um, so that was the first thing that I was doing. And that is something anybody can do right here, right now, is that if you have got a, um, if you would like to write an article, and I'm, I'm sure there's a good marketing company that you could uh, go to to speak to about how to do this, but put a press release out, make something, you know, put it out there and become the expert in your area for short term rentals. That's pretty much one of the secrets to my successes. So, um, so yes, so to answer your question, gosh, I'm all over the place here today, but um, yes, I did do a little bit, but mostly now it has evolved in that due to the success of the book uh, that I'm now doing things like judging the shorties awards and uh, getting up on stages, well, virtually at the moment uh, and, uh, and getting to meet some cool people around the world. You know, you're in Barcelona, I'm in Australia. We get to connect yeah. because of, uh, because of this amazing industry we're in. Yeah, I love that. And I love actually something that uh, has come is coming to mind now when you're explaining this amazing trajectory is back in 2016, you know, like you mentioned, there weren't very many coaches. The tech still was the tech scene was still a bit limited. Um, it, it, there weren't as many vacation rental experts out there today. There's Everybody a lot more. Is. There's a lot more new tech coming to the scene. Uh, all of the tech companies, I mean, there are some really great innovative ones out there, but at the same time, it's becoming a little bit commoditized. It's hard to distinguish. You know, there are so many property management software. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, uh, how are you going to really distinguish PMS from another one? Uh, how, like, what is the trick today to become this expert in the space? And how do people who, who want to build their brand in vacation rentals, whether it be property managers or tech companies, what's, what's the deal in your opinion? 
the one thing, the one gap that I see that is missing at the moment is, and this is even on Clubhouse or other forms of social media, that in the short-term rental industry, there's a lot of pitching, marketing and networking to each other in the net, in the industry, but there's not a lot for property managers. They've got to remember who their target audience is. Who are they serving? Now, it's usually property investors. It's realists or well, realtors. Uh, so you've really got to take a look at the audience that you are really wanting to target. Who have got the properties that are going to um, give you those you know those listings. And then you need to become an expert in that community. So the real estate community, you need to step up in the um, the professional arena. So something like as simple as, and these are worldwide, Business Network International Meetings, BNI. Now, folks, if you have a look at BNI.com, I think it is, these are worldwide meetings and gatherings of professionals uh, where they meet for, say, a lunch, and it's one attorney, one accountant, one only one person from each field. But what they do is they have a meal together. They get to speak about their business. They do a one-minute infomercial is what it's called. So it's basically your elevator pitch or, or how you describe yourself in one minute. But you get to stand up in front of this room of professionals for one minute and speak. Now, if you can do that and hand out your business cards to those people and then follow up and, and try and organize one-on-one -on -one meetings with that attorney, with that insurance broker, with that lender, I can promise you, you will get listings out of it because they're dealing with professional property investors. They're dealing with the people that are your target audience. Yeah. So I think what we've got to do is, a lot of short-term rental operators connect with each other in Facebook, connect with each other in Clubhouse, but they should really be connecting with the wider audience. So that's probably my tip would be have a look in your own community, get in with a professional organization, networking group, and get out there and tell them who you are, what you're offering, and make sure you've got business cards a name badge. I know it's really simple, but a name badge or a, a uniforms to get that conversation going and a bloody good website. So, and if you yeah. haven't got those things, talk to Maver because I'm sure in marketing group, you guys, you've got enough. You can take on some more clients, right, Maver? So, Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's such good advice to pay attention. I know that there's a lot of people on LinkedIn. I come from a background of freelance translation, which I did years ago. And uh, on LinkedIn, all the translators are just connecting with other translators. And then they're saying, well, where are all the clients at? And exactly. Really, well, go into the niche. I do SEO and marketing. My network is full of SaaS companies, re vacation rental people. It's not only other SEOs and other marketers. And it's such good advice to really go out there, expand your network. Don't only look at the person that you're connecting with as are you going to turn into dollar signs, but build, just building the network really and in the right approach place. It. You know, I used to approach the, um, the realtors or the lenders with, an, with the thought process of how can I help you build yeah. your business? Not about how you can help me. Don't go in with that mindset because you're going to get, you know, booted yeah. out the door but how can I help you so with the real estate agents for example as a property manager I approached them not as competition I came into I would go to their open homes their fully furnished overpriced mansions I would walk in there and go can I put together an appraisal report for you to show potential for short-term rental earnings that you can use as a sales tool for your property investors and then look if if while you've got it on the market, if you want to um, promote try before you buy, uh, I'll take care of them. I'll clean the property. I'll look after the property. And let's try and let me try and help you sell the property. That is a real estate agent's dream, having someone yeah. come in the, the door like that. So think about how you can help them, not how they can help you. And if you go in with that mindset, you're going to win every yeah. time. And to add on to that, don't assume that you know what is going to help them, but talk to them first 
get to know them, what they have going on, and then figure out how you can help them from there. There's a lot Love of people it. who think they know how they can help uh, yeah. and they have they great intentions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it can be, it can be. And it also still doesn't, even if you're coming in with the right intentions, like I'm gonna help these people, if you haven't spent time trying to get to know what their day-to-day -day is like, what their experiences are like, what you're doing isn't gonna be helpful most likely. Yeah, absolutely. So to close off uh, this recording, I have a question for you, which I didn't prepare you for. Which is totally What's it gonna be? <laughs> it's okay, it's not a big deal. Um, but actually I'm curious about, we were talking about the tech landscape and a lot of the listeners are tech founders uh, in this vacation rental space. So I was curious uh, from what you've been seeing online today, uh, what kind of brand or messaging or which company do you think is most helpful for property managers today and what is it that they're doing right? Look, <laughs> great question. And I'm going to make a big confession here. And this it will surprise a lot of people that running 130 properties, I didn't use much tech at all. And I know, like, what? I used Airbnb. I used Zero for my accounting. I had a real estate trust account software um, that I used as well. That was it. So my biggest regret, and this is where I see people are doing it really well now, and I'm going to give a shout out to any pricing optimization tool because Smarty Pants here thought she could guess the prices. Wrong. And how much money did I leave on the table but not using a price labs, a wheelhouse? Uh, you know, there's some incredible dynamic pricing tools out there now. I, If I was a property manager today, that would be my first go-to. I would be finding that pricing tool out there that is going to, you know, that, are smart, that really is smarter than what you can guess these prices for. And COVID, we have got such a weird, wacky world. We can't say that anything is, there's no trends at the moment that we can base our, our, our prices off. Uh, we don't know what we don't know. So engage the experts of and wheelhouse uh, Andrew Kitchell. I'm, I'll give him a shout out. Hopefully he's a listener, but um I just love what he's doing. He is putting a hell of a lot of money into developing a business and a, a, a company that's really supporting the, the property managers in the industry at the moment, driving people forward. So um, look, that's probably my go-to. What I think is missing, and this is a question, but well, this is something I just want to throw in here because any tech software company that wants to partner with Julie George on this idea there is nobody, no property management system at the moment that I've come across that is working in with real estate agent trust accounting software. Okay. Man, that is an issue. That is such an issue out there that is faced by people. I was talking to someone in California today, Australia, we've all around the world, we've got the same issue that we need to have owner statements printed with the correct format we need uh particular accounting statements that come out at the end of each month to show auditors that are um regulated by the government and there's nobody offering that at the moment so hello anybody in the tech space who wants to make the zillions of dollars let's chat because i know what's missing i can see a massive gap in the market and nobody's taken advantage of that yet great thank you for sharing that julie Pleasure. This has been so much fun. I really enjoyed talking to you. I'm sure we could talk for much longer and I'm sure that we will. We will. We yeah. will in the future, Maver, but it will be with a glass of uh, Vino de Blanc. See you. Yes. We, <laughs> All right, Julie, thank you so much. And uh, where's the best place for people to connect with you if they want to talk with you more? Yeah, sure. I've got a website, a million dollar host.com.au. But please, I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Clubhouse every Sunday, 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I run a regular event there. It's free. Uh, just connect with me. I'm human. Don't be intimidated. Connect. Let's talk. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing all your listeners soon one day in a real-life event. Yes, that would be great. <laughs>
All right, Julie, thank you so much. And if uh, the listeners or watchers of this episode did enjoy it, please give it a like, share, subscribe, and tell us something down below. Uh, thank you so much and see you next time. Mm-hmm.